Hey dudes, Stuart Warren here, Guide with Ash and Fly Shop. I'm gonna show you how to tie one of my favorite little winter, late fall, low water, uh, kind of intruder-y flies. It's really simple. Um, you just use a single station, which is kind of nice. It's really quick. It's one I like to tie a lot because I can whip them out pretty fast. They look great and they last. So we're gonna start off with one of these OPST steelhead shanks. I've got the, uh, what is this one? 50 millimeter. So I'm just gonna take one of those guys out of the package and I'm gonna put a quarter inch hot bead on the front. I just thread that guy on there, put it up on your vise. I've got this handy little tube fly attachment that helps me to tie these just single shanks in. And just make sure that eye is oriented up. And I'm gonna tie in my hook, my trailing hook. And I'm gonna make my fly <clears throat> not super long. Um, I think the, the shorter body with kind of the long gangly stuff on it, it's really kind of a nice look and it's really easy to, to tie. So part of this fly is simplicity and also effectiveness. So I'm gonna bring it back so that I have about, I'll call it an inch or so behind that, that bead. And I'm just gonna tie in this trailing hook and I like to tie it so it's long enough that I can trade the hook out if I have to. In case one of my guys throws it in the rocks and breaks the point off. And just make sure that's pointed up, the hook's up there. And just tie it in nice and firm. Bring it all the way forward. And I always think about <clears throat> the fish of a lifetime when I'm tying my flies, especially tying in a trailer hook. I wanna really secure this thing well. I've had a couple of them come off, never on a fish luckily, but just make sure you really Tie this thing in here strong. And so I always double back my loose ends there, fold them over, tie them in tight again, and bring it all the way back just as a precaution. And then just trim off the extras here. Sometimes you use a razor blade to cut these, and I didn't bring one, so just gonna hack it with the scissors. Apparently, I need new scissors. And just tie all that in. I'm gonna use, uh, it's a, a pink diamond braid. Once again, just a really easy material. Makes this fly go really fast. Just tie in the tag, tie all nice and tight. And then I'm gonna select a, a strung Chinese saddle hackle in pink. This one's a hairline product. And I'm just gonna get one that has some clean barbs. The size of it doesn't really matter that much. It kind of acts as a prop for the rest of the fly. And then just gonna clean off those bottom webby portions here. I'm going to tie it in tip first so then I just pull back on the top and clip myself a little small area to tie in. And I'm going to wrap the diamond braid first and then cover it with that saddle hackle. And then bring your thread forward. Leave yourself about a quarter inch in the front. That's where a single station is going to go. And just wrap this diamond braid nice and even. couple tie downs. Clip off your extra, save that piece for later. And then with this saddle, I'm just gonna kind of get everything nice and pulled out and then pull it back as I wrap it forward. It's not too crucial, but I'm a bit of a perfectionist with these guys and I like them to kind of lay backwards if I can get them. And so as I wrap, I just kind of stroke these hackle barbs back and that just lets those guys lay out nice and clean. About right there is fine. And you can kind of pull your barbs out of the way that's left over there. Give yourself a nice clean spot to tie it off so you don't get a big clump. And I'm tying pink because it's winter steelhead and we're all thinking winter steelhead, so I thought it'd be fun to show you all a nice little pink one. Okay, and then just stroke those guys back, pull them out of the way a little bit. <clears throat> nice and clean. 
Okay, now I'm just going to do a single station uh, composite loop here. So I'm using the Sinios Predator Wrap and the UV, what is that, UV Pearl. It's kind of just a nice uh, stiff material when you tie it in um, and a dubbing loop. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to cut that piece off because that's extra. And pull off a section of about, I don't know, an inch long. Cut that. And then I'm just going to stroke all these fibers so that they're nice and level and come down about halfway on that length. I'm just going to cut that in half. And these are just going to act really as a prop and add a little bit of color to it. And then I'm using an ice dub and UV pink. Love that, the UV stuff right now. I'm really into it. And so what I'm going to do is just take some of this ice dub, about a pinch. I'm going to lay this down on the table here. And I'm going to kind of spread my predator wrap fibers through that. And then I'm going to take another pinch of this UV dub and just lay it on top there and just kind of pat it down. <clears throat> it's a real simple composite loop. Then you just make a big loop here. So I'm just pulling a loop, a line straight down, and I'm going to wrap it tight. And then I like to wrap my thread around that loop as well, kind of secures it. And then just finish her off there. And you take that little pile of material you just made, looks something like this. And what the dubbing does, it just kind of holds these fibers in place and provides just a little bit of a shoulder on the fly. And I'm going to use my little spinning tool here and just kind of clean up the bottom of it and then just give it a good spin while pinching the thread. And then I'm just going to slowly let that spin here and maybe give it another little twist, get it going. And then I'm going to take my handy dandy toothbrush, obviously old and used, works perfect for this. And I'm just going to kind of pull out these fibers. And I'm going to do this by stroking down first. And you'll see it's going to pull some stuff out of there. That's all right. But we want it to kind of get nice and even on here so you don't have one big clump. And then I'm going to work it back up. And this just makes a nice big shoulder for this fly. Now that you're done with that, kind of pull those fibers back to the back of the fly. So as you wrap them, they're going to lay down fairly well oriented, meaning they're not going to be laying forward. And it just takes a couple wraps sometimes to get these guys to start going on there. And I'm just going to build myself a ball right here. And every single wrap, I'm just going to kind of pull out these fibers and pull them towards the back like so. And then take that rest of that loop and wrap it forward. And then just do a couple securing wraps on that guy to hold it in place. And then you can clip off your dubbing loop, get it out of the way. And then take your handy dandy toothbrush again and really just brush this thing. <clears throat> get those fibers to pull out really well. Got kind of a clump on top, so I'm just going to pull some to the side, maybe pull some of them out of there, like so. Perfect. So that's kind of the, the shoulder of our fly here. Then I'm going to take a real light pink. <clears throat> this is the, uh, the Select Marabou here from the Ashton Fly Shop. It's a Wopsy product. Great stuff. Just going to pull one of those out of the package and just clean up the bottom half. We don't need too much Marabou. I see a lot of flies that have just too much of this stuff tied in here. And that's kind of the reason we use this dubbing loop is it gives the fly, the fly a profile without having to just to tie too much material in. So about right in there is so probably fine. And I'm going to pull it all down and away from the top and I'm tie it in with the tip. And I'm just going to pull that and clip it, give myself a spot to tie the feather in. Ooh, perfect. And then as you wrap this feather, just pull those fibers back towards the back of the fly. Ouch. 
That's why we debarb our hook. Before we tie it. Another great thing about debarbing the hook before you tie it is if you are gonna clip that barb off eventually, sometimes when you clip the barb, it'll break the hook. So if you do it before you tie it in, then you can just put a new one on. And I'm just gonna tie those down nice and tight. And clip off that piece of the stem. And you'll notice you have just a little bit of a stem left. Go ahead and just do a couple of wraps to kind of tie that guy down if it will go. Mine doesn't want to cooperate, so we're just going to leave it. Now I'm going to take a feather from a god wall or a teal or any of those kind of waterfowl flank feathers. I like the god wall here. It's got a nice kind of black and, and white barring. And I'm just going to prep this feather by once again pulling off the webby stuff towards the bottom. Out of the way. And we're just going to do one, maybe two, probably two wraps with this feather here. So you don't need a whole lot left on there. Something about that much will do. And I'm going to leave both sides of the feather on and just pull those guys back, get them to behave themselves. Clip off the tip of the feather. Give yourself something to tie in. And then I always like to kind of lick my fingers and pull that marabou out of the way so you're not fighting it the whole time. And tie that gadwall feather in or teal or whatever you want to use there is fine. And then I'm going to just kind of pull those two fibers back and wrap as I do so. Give this fly a little bit of barring, a little bit more on the strength in the front of that feather, give it a little vortex. And you see that just was one wrap <clears throat> with the feather. And that's really as much as you need. Um, it's, it's a nice look. And if you get too much on there, it gets kind of bulky and awkward. And then just find your stem piece there and clip it off. And then I'm going to add one little piece of black and white guinea or natural guinea to the front of that even. Add just a little more barring, a little more texture to your fly. The great thing about this color combination is it gets almost translucent when it gets wet. So adding a little bit of that kind of buggy stuff to it really helps when the water gets low and clear, which is most likely when I'll be fishing this fly. And I like that bead on there, so when it's low and clear, I'm typically fishing just a little bit deeper, or fishing some of the deeper spots, I should say. And once again, you know, we're gonna prepare a guinea feather, clip off the tip. And that's probably a little bit too much because I'm just gonna give this guy one wrap. Tie that guy in. Perfect. And go ahead and clip off that stem and just kind of pull everything, kind of give it a little pruning, if you will, make it sure it's nice and cleaned up and a couple finishing wraps there in the front. Now I'm going to take, this is the new, this is my new favorite thing, it's Flashaboo Ice Blue Pearl. And I'm going to take three pieces of flash because three is my lucky number. Some of you may want more flash than that. Um, that's up to you. You can tie in a bunch. You could tie in just a little bit. I'm just going to tie these three pieces in here. This flash really shows up when it hits the water. It's almost like a, a like a, a bluish, purplish, clear tinge. And I'm going to tie these in long so I can adjust the length. So give yourself some length to work with here. Go ahead and tie those fibers in. Leave yourself a little bit 
<clears throat> on the front end of it so you can kind of pull them back. And I'll show you a trick here to help keep these fibers, these flashies in place. A lot of times they'll pull out. So you can see they're kind of propped straight up and I'm just gonna pull those guys back and then tie them in a second time so they don't fall out. Spay casting can be pretty ag aggressive with these flies. It can really pull some of these smaller pieces off. So I'm just gonna clip those nice and clean. And lean those guys real long. I like those guys to be long. And a couple securing wraps again. And then I'm going to take two grizzly hackle feathers and get yourself a good cape. It's worth the money. These feathers really make your fly dance in the water. I'm going to pull one from the left side and one from the right side, about at equal sizes. Doesn't need to be perfect. And just kind of match those guys up. And the reason we take one from the left and one from the right is they should have kind of this natural bend to them. That'll make them look really nice on top of that fly. The fish don't care, but I know I do. And I'm gonna just check out the length of these things. I want them to, to kind of sit a little bit past the bend of the hook there, just to give that fly some length without the bulk. And go ahead and strip them so that they're even and give yourself quite a bit of extra stem to work with here. I'll show you another trick to keeping these guys in. These are the ones that usually get cast off pretty quickly, especially with real aggressive casters. And just kind of keep those guys pinched the same so they're about the same length. And go ahead and just tie those guys in so that they're laying nice and neat on top. And since I left myself a little bit of length with the stem, I can kind of adjust them so that it'll sit. Oh, I didn't want to sit. Try that again. Sometimes you have to give your first wrap nice and loose and slowly apply pressure as you come on around again. And that'll make them nice and propped up. Behave yourself. No. feathers being fussy. So I'm just going to pull it to the side a little bit more and then give it another securing wrap, see if I can't get it to behave. All right, there we go. I kind of like these guys to prop out a little bit because they're going to be back there dancing, doing all sorts of stuff. Then I'm just going to take those stems that we left long and wrap them or pull it back and wrap over them again and that's going to secure those in there really well. <clears throat> and go ahead and clip your stems. And that's that. A couple more securing wraps here. Give yourself a nice head to keep that bead in place. Keep everything nice and tight. A little half hitch here. And then a whip finish over that. And nice and short. Clip that thread short. And there you have it. And there you go. Nice little winter steelhead fly. Nice light pink. Uh, good, good low water, uh, good low water bug.